If you enjoy this podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe. Special thank you to Landmark Coffee Roasters, a sponsor for this podcast. If you haven't tasted their coffee, you've got to go check it out. Some of the best beans in Southern California, landmarkroasters.com. Ladies and gentlemen, David Hansen Sturm in the Stoke House. Whoa. Dave, you are actually always in the Stoke House. I am. I you, am always in the Stoke House. Dave, you are a filmmaker, cinematographer, photographer, editor, and of course, our in-house podcast producer. Mm. You're, uh, you're overseeing this podcast right now. We are. Uh, but you've got some uh, trainees uh, taking care of business. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Aaron. Yes, Aaron and Chris, the best. Um, you are a true camera gear nerd. From 8mm film to digital magic, you are the true gear nerd. How do you know all this? Yeah, yeah. To me, you are Video Dave. You are a business owner. You run Twin Palms Media, but you also oversee our media department at Legacy. <laughs> yeah. uh, you also oversee our media department at Legacy. Dave, you've produced upwards of a thousand videos for Legacy. Awesome. I just looked it up. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You're born and raised in New York. Yes. Uh, you have York. a Look out. Yeah. You have a degree from USC in cinema arts critical studies. Praise the Lord. You are a true student of film. And also a lot of people don't know this, but you're an incredible electric guitar player and you can rip some mean blues on the telly if you have to. And uh, you were a front man playing in bands growing up. You're also a genius in the world of video games. You know every system, every game. And you bought me a Pac-Man arcade console, which me and the kids play all the time in my office. I think it's so cool. We introduced them to Pac-Man and all the stuff. Yeah, so yeah, fun. The kids need Pac-Man. Yes. Uh, Dave, you also love the word of God deeply. Uh, you are a watchman on the wall, as I like to call you, always desiring that the word of God is being shared and declared truthfully. Uh, you know it very well, and you love discussing the deep theology of God's word. You got three kids, and uh, you've been married to Stephanie for 21 years. Wow. Is that right? 21. 21. 21 years. Shout out to Stephanie. Yeah, she's, oh man. And the fam. Yes. I told her the other day, I cast her in my romantic Christmas movie. She's the babe. Yes. I casted her perfectly. Nice. She, yeah, she liked that. Nice. You are a good father. You're a good husband. You love your family deeply. And you've been a good friend to me all these years, Dave. You have yes. been here at Legacy from day one. Uh, and you've been my great friend. Uh, I, I, I so appreciate it. You are a faithful friend. You're Barnabas to me, the son of encouragement. And encouraging everywhere you go, Dave... Had to have you on the show. Welcome to the Stoke House. Oh, man. It's so cool to be here, dude. This is awesome. Um, yes. You know, this has been, this experiment has been incredible for me because we've had all your buddies on and we've had pastors on, right. and guys that you know, and it has been just trickled down the stories that I hear because I'm normally behind the, um, you know, console doing the editing. Yes. And uh, it's, it's been like fertilizer. It's been amazing mm -hmm. just to hear. I walk away with just nuggets of gold every time. Mm -hmm. And then I'm in the middle of it. Like, I'm just so grateful because this is what I really wanted to do with my, because I love doing camera work. Yes. And I love movies. Yeah. And I love that. But this is like, a, I just wanted to do these kinds of things. Yeah. The Lord put us together. Yeah. And I'm really grateful yeah. for that. And it's been a blast. It's been fun. Well, you've told me lots of times, you know, like, you know, I'm like, Dave, you got to build this film. You got to do this. You got to do that. And you got to do this. And, and of course you have done those things and you want to do more of those things, but you're always like, you know what? I'm doing what I want to do. Like, I want to use my craft for God's glory. And, uh, I don't know. I've always been very thankful that you've, you've had that perspective because you're like, yeah, of course I want to do the film, but like, I get to like edit all the sermons. I get to like, I get to work through all of this stuff and get this into people's hands. And really, like I said, you've produced upwards of a thousand videos yeah. for legacy. I can't it's believe amazing. it in nine years. That's incredible. No, it is. It's that unreal. Is, that is amazing. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's definitely, it's something that like, it's like I could make, you, know, you can get out there and I, and I worked in the business for a little bit mm -hmm. and you know, it's, it's the hours are crazy. Right. I mean, forget about having a family. Right. And being around. I right. mean, I mean, even like years, years later, I, I talk to, I'll talk to editors. I have an editor in my neighborhood. She's amazing. She edits like major movies. Mm. She edited like Meet the Fockers. Wow. I mean, she's amazing. She, wow. She did the Dukes of Hazard movie. Wow. I mean, big movies. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not even naming the good ones. Right. Um, 
she's busy all the time. Wow. No family. No. I mean, I love her. Yeah, yeah. And she's great, but she's busy yeah. constantly. So when you're when you jump into that industry, it's really just going to be your life. There's high demand. But when God grabs your heart, yeah, and you do have a passion for filmmaking, camera work, whatever it might be, or you have a gift with editing. I just want to do these things for God. Mm -hmm. And then what's and at the end of your life, you want to look back and go, well, did I do things that mattered? Yeah. Well, we're doing stuff we're that doing matters. It. Yes, it's true. Yes, yes, we're doing it. Thank you, Dave. And it's been so fun. It's been a blast. Uh, you came up to me uh, day one of Legacy, and yes. um, you were like, I want to do, actually prior to that, prior to okay, the launch. So I was at another church, and it was a great church. Yeah. Wow, the best people. Yeah. Thought I was going to be there forever. Yeah. And we heard, the, um, well, Every chapel. behind the scenes, I really wanted to, I had this, I wasn't doing video for the Lord. Yes. So I was just working and doing different things. So yeah, Calvary Chapel, Burbank, yes. shout out. They're, yes. They're great. Love um, them. The best. So I was going to be there forever. I mean, it was like totally a home. And then I heard your radio ad mm. and Stephanie heard it. And we had uh, KKLA on in the kitchen mm. and we were doing some cooking or something. And we were like, wow, Greg Laurie is promoting like a church that's opening. Because Greg was a big, Greg was, it's interesting that we're knit together a little bit through Greg. Yes. That you come from Harvest and I listened to like two or three years of a new beginning. You were walking, right? In your neighborhood. Yes. In Studio City. With my dog. With your dog. And the new beginning literally planted, Greg planted, the word of God planted just seeds yes. in my heart. Yeah. And I love his, I love his, I just love the way Pastor Greg, like you used some quotes this weekend yeah. that are classic yeah. Pastor Greg. Yeah, yeah. He's just so hilarious. Yeah. And he's and he gets he gets right to the point. Totally. And he's just this blue collar guy, but he's intellectual too. He's right. like he just he somehow he's the whole package. Yeah. He's the he's the guy that can just yeah. Anyway, um so So you listened to him for two, three years. Two or three years listening to him. Wow. Um, thank you for steering. See, this is this is your gift. You yeah. can steer it. Yeah. I'm going to just lose like train of thought. You just steer it right back. Oh, it's so good. Right I love these back, details. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> totally. You're walking your dog in Studio City Absolutely. in your neighborhood. Thank you. I need that. And so, two um, or three years. So yeah. So listening to Greg for a few years and then- um, You going, hear us on the radio. Going to Calvary Chapel Burbank and then um, I hear your thing on the radio. And um, video opportunity over there wasn't great. Sure. Because they just have a simple video. Totally. They didn't need anything else. Yeah, yeah. So it was an opportunity. I thought to myself, wait, maybe they need a video. Yeah. Because I really want to do video. Yeah. And I wanted to work with Greg, actually. Right. Like I thought, man, I can. I ended up working with his guys the first day. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so we emailed you. Mm -hmm. And um, Steph helped me put the email together. I still have it. Wow, it's Dave. A, it's a keepsake. Dude, I got to- It's one of those cool things, you know? No, I need to dig that up. I want to yeah. see that. You got to send that to me. It's one of those cool things I try not to delete when you're deleting yeah, mail. You're right. like, don't delete that email right, to Josh. Right, right. It's like monumental. It's totally, so cool. yeah. yeah. So anyway, we met, we emailed, I emailed you and we met for coffee. Yeah. Yeah. We met in M Street? We met at Starbucks out Starbucks. in Encino. Got it. Encino. And we had a great conversation for an hour. You got to know me. I got to know you a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was funny because at the meeting, you were like, well, I'm happy to have you come and do video, but you got to be real serious about it. <laughs> we got guys coming out from Riverside. You were giving me the whole talk. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, it was great though. Yeah. Because you were just knocking the thermos around, you know? Yeah, it yeah, yeah. awesome. Dude. Oh, wow. And I was just like, okay, yeah. He doesn't know that yeah. I'm really, I'm, yeah, I'm into this. Like, yeah. I want to do this. Yeah. And uh, it was great. It was a great conversation. Um, and then I came out for day one. Yes, day one. And day one was awesome. Greg came out. You captured um, it. Who was uh, Austin? Yeah, Austin, Austin was. Austin is like a miracle dude. Austin he's Thompson. Like, he's he's the, he's got all the. My long lost brother. Yeah. Oh, really? No. Yeah, Thompson. Yeah, yeah, Thompson. Yeah, he has, him and his wife came out and he's really specialized. I mean, mm -hmm. he knows how to set up a camera, leave it rolling. Yep. Run to another camera, leave it rolling. Both yep. of those shots are epic. Yes. He knows how to get, like, collect. And he's in all the right spots, collecting this and that. He's got four or five cameras going and he's he, he can play the drums, this guy. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, he's got the talent. Right. He knows how to do the camera work. So it was cool to see him working. Yeah. Um, Cause I have a little bit of that, yeah. which is, you know, praise the Lord. And I was up on the riser and I got the main shot that Sunday. Yes. So it was cool that he was like, yeah, get the main shot. Like, you don't even know me. He's like, wow. I'm sure. You're going to go be great. Yeah. Meanwhile, he had like a backup over in the corner. like <laughs> Just in case. Shot. Yeah. <laughs> got to have a backup. Yeah. And we're running backups right now. No, those shots were great, man. And that was a great capture. Uh, Pastor Greg preached 
called people to repentance. Uh, I got up and gave like a vision statement and uh, that launched the church. And then you told me, Dave, you're like, I'm going to do video. I'm here every single week. You showed up with yeah. your gear and you're like, I'm here. And I was like, I told Pastor Greg, I'm like, I, should I, what do you think about Dave? Should I let him do this? You know? And Greg was like, yeah, give him a chance. Let's just see what happens. What's the worst can happen? He doesn't show up, you know, let's just do it. And you've been showing up every Sunday for nine. drunk, my <laughs> No, 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 no. You've been showing up every Sunday for nine years. Oh man, it's been, I've been, you know what? I haven't been there every Sunday. There was one Sunday yeah. I was actually in the hospital. Uh, and then there was a couple Sundays, I think that I showed up and helped the guy set up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so it hasn't been every, but almost well, every. Well, I love that you can remember the five times you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, no, you've been faithful. You've been, fa you've been faithful. Yeah. And uh, it's it's, the Lord. The what Lord's a journey, there. man. We've been able to capture so much. And I think what I love, a lot of people don't know this, but like we have basically been having coffee every Thursday for nine years as well. It's been a blast. So we shoot video, we talk, we hang out, we talk shop, we talk life. And, uh, man, it's just been a joy. You've been, you've, you've become one of the brothers, you know, that's, uh, been in here on the inside yeah, and I got uh, sutured in. It's amazing. It's amazing. I got sutured in as like a brother gets, you know, but they could get sutured out. Mm -mm. Careful, no. no, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Once you're in the f familia, once you're, once well, you're in the family, nine, you're sutured in, you're once you're in the mafia of Christ, you can't get out. You can't. You're, you're stuck. <laughs> Come for you. You said the Holy Spirit will find you. By the way, we need that mafia guy on yeah, here. Yeah. If you're out there. Oh yeah. Michael Franzese. Some, yeah. 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 Michael Franzese. Somebody get this great. to him. Yeah. No, he would be great. He's got such a great story. We got to get that other guy in here too, Mel Gibson. We just like, it'd be great. You know, Mel, if you yeah. can hear. Easy to get Mel. Yeah. Why isn't Michael Franzese, why hasn't someone whacked that guy? Well, I don't know. I mean, he's, it's he's. The Lord, right? No, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. Holy Spirit. The guy's preaching the gospel. Right. Going around telling all these stories. Right, right. these books and doing movies. It's totally. Like, it's like your, your he's witness got favor. protection thing isn't working very well. He's got favor. where you are. He got favor at a high protection. I mean, a high level. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, because he was involved. I mean, you guys, I mean, many of you have heard him know his story, but he was involved in the mafia and at a high level. And uh, it's crazy, yeah, that nothing has happened to him. They let him get out and they let him, you know, continue on in Christ and use the story amazing. of the mafia for Christ's glory. I mean, wow. Amazing, isn't yeah. it? It yeah. is amazing. Colombo yeah. family, right? One of those. I think so, yeah. One of those families, yeah. So you, the Banano family, who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Dave, you grew up in New York. Grew up in New York. Yeah, that was an interesting uh, 21 years. Born and raised in New York. Born and raised in New York. What's, uh, what city, what town? Scarsdale, New York, where there's a Rosenblum on every corner. Mm. And that's Dr. Rosenblum, mm. uh, Rabbi Rosenblum. Oh, wow. Uh, a secular Jewish town. Got it. These are the jokes, people. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to get canceled or yeah. something. Like, my wife's like, don't do this. You're going to get canceled. So, <laughs> she actually was the... Total opposite. When you texted me like, hey, let's do it. She was like, you got to do it. Yes. She's the best. In yes. Character, man. She's, yes. She's yes. awesome. So um, yeah, grew up in New York. It was a, it was fun. New York is a really interesting place. Um, grew up about 50 minutes outside of the city. Mm. So we were able to like go into Madison Square Garden to see wow. concerts as kids, you know. Very cool. Gosh, we saw, I saw Tom Petty. I wow. saw like John Cougar. Back really? In the day. I saw Brian Adams. We saw the Grateful Dead. I mean, we'd go on the train. There was a train in my, in my town uh -huh. and we'd jump on the train because, you know, kids, you could do anything back then. Right. You're 14. You just wow. You, so you would jump on by yourself. We would just go. With, with, with your friends. Yeah. We would just go. What was the, the train? What was the train cost? The train was like, I think it was like. Five bucks, or five something. bucks, and you could get to Manhattan. Get to Manhattan, yeah. Wow, it was. It you was. You could fun. just walk around Manhattan. Yeah, you just walk around Manhattan, do all kinds of crazy. You stuff. would get off the train where? Uh, well, you get off at Grand Central Station. Okay. And then you know that's the hub to like the city. Yeah. So, but Grand um, Madison Square Garden was a great place for like. It's just one of the biggest arenas. Yeah. It's like the arena we have here. It's mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. And um, just tons of concerts. So it was really neat to have the city kind of close to where you're growing up. Mm -hmm. But we weren't in the city. We're right. in the suburb area right. of the city, which right. is really nice. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you, faith-wise, though, you know, I've always been a super creative kid. And no one ever said to me, hey, you got all this talent. Mm. Do you know where that comes from? Mm. The Lord gave you this talent. Mm. And the Lord loves you. Yeah. No one ever said this to me growing up. It wasn't until I got out to California that I started to hear more of this, you know, but I did, there was a seed planted as a, um, as a kid, there was a seed planted, um, probably eight or 10. 
I heard the gospel message on an Easter Sunday mm. at church. Um, oh. We used to go to my grandparents' church occasionally. Okay. okay. My mom and my grandma kind of fell off. Okay. They had like a little war going on got after, it. after my uh, dad left us at eight. Mm. They got divorced. Mm. Then um, that family kind of tore apart a little mm -hmm. bit. But you're, one, you're, you're one of how many kids? I'm actually the fourth kid, three older sisters. Yep. Lord help me. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite sister moment is my sister Martha is absolutely hilarious. Yeah. She's this like forever sun tanning, you know, girl. Yes. Yeah. She's gotta be sun baked all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's out there in the backyard with like this three panel, you know, like things shining herself. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. Oh, that's so interesting that she's got three panels. She's like really she knows how to do it. Yeah. I'm like, wait a second, three panels? That's my BG greatest hits record. <laughs> You know, the fold out, try fold out. She yeah. covered it all in tinfoil. The <laughs> records are still in it. No way. Baby. Are you serious? Yeah. That's hilarious. It's classic stuff. Anyway, so yeah, heard the three older sisters. Yeah, three older sisters. You so four of you. Four, and you know it's it's funny because we talk about we've talked about a lot about being a middle child or sure. the last child or yep. whatever, and how the dynamics are. Yep, you're the baby. I'm, but I'm number four. But I'm the first boy. Your firstborn boy. So that was like a whole, I wasn't really like, I'm so like, you, I'm number one, baby. You so know what dad, I'm saying? So dad was, yeah, dad clinged on to you. It didn't feel like I was number four. Yeah. Because I was a boy. It felt like I was the first of, you know. So anyway, that was that was different. But my sisters are awesome. Um, so yeah, I did hear the gospel on an Easter Sunday and that seed was planted. I remember the moment. Mm. So there was a seed planted and then it wasn't until later on when I moved out to California, I met my wife. Um, that she was just on fire, believe it. Mm. And um, this girl was just, Stephanie is just one of the most, oh, she is the most beautiful person mm -hmm. inside and out. And when I saw her at film school, I was sitting in Norris Cinema Theater at USC on a campus. And this was a classroom mm. that was a movie theater. Mm. And so the uh, teacher would go up to the front of the theater, big theater, and he would teach from you know a little podium that he'd move around with a microphone, mm. he needed a microphone. Mm. And um, the theater was filled with students. Mm. And then after he taught, they'd run a 35 millimeter print, like a brand new print of whatever you're seeing. And it could be a movie from the 20s all the way to, you know, I was there in the 90s, um, which was really cool. Anyway, um, Stephanie walked in and I remember, I can just remember there was- In this a, class? Yeah, she was, she, was a, she was in this class and I would see her walk in, you know? Yeah. Wasn't stalking her. Yeah. But I would see her walk in. And you can either was, confirm nor deny that you were stalking her. Can't confirm or deny. <laughs> I refuse to answer on the grounds that it may incriminate <laughs> myself. Yes. I will not talk about this. That's funny. Anyway, she was just glowing. You know, yeah. Just beautiful girl. And she it was it was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I found out years later. Wow. It's the Holy Spirit. I mean, there was something so special about her. And then it was also like this like weird, like, I mean, we're married 21 years. Mm. We have three beautiful kids. Mm -hmm. And it's like this... Um, like, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it's not a prophecy, but it's like when I saw her, mm. there was those, that feeling of like, that weight of like, of where I am now. You know what I mean? Like, it's mm. like, I didn't know that I would be. Wow. But it was like, wow, this is, that's the girl. Wow. That's the, that, that's my soulmate. Yeah. Like, this is her. Right. Anyway, super yeah. cool. And she was an on fire Christian. I mean, not playing around. Yeah. She was, I mean, like our first date was like, let's open the Bible. Wow. It was pretty wild. Wow. And um, she brought me to a harvest. Mm. And it was before the, um, before the Angel Stadium. Really? It was where they used to meet with Chuck. Mm. It was like that Pacific little, Amphitheater? I think it was that. Yeah. So this has got to be like 2000. Wow. Maybe, yeah, I think 2000, 2000. No, I think 2000, or maybe it was 99. Okay. Anyway, um, who's the dude with the guitar, the cowboy guy? Oh, yeah, Dennis Agagenian. Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. I, I immediately connected with the him. Fastest flat picker in the West. Now we know why that guy's around. Oh, yeah. Because people just connect with that guy. Oh, yeah, he's a character, man. Oh, he's the best. Yeah, yeah, he's a giant cowboy. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so heard the gospel again there, and Stephanie was a big influence on me, and... Mm. um. So you, um, but you grew up in New York, yep. family of Olympians. Is this right, Dave? Family of Olympians. So my mom was a uh, marathon runner. She ran, gosh, multiple marathons. I'm wow. going to say at least three. Yeah. 
I went to them. Mm -hmm. She ran New York. She ran Boston. Mm. She ran something else. Mm -hmm. She was always running. Wow. And um, my sisters are incredibly athletic. My mm -hmm. sister Martha right now is actually, she runs her own studio. Wow. Where she does like, I mean, literally her job, like she's like working out all day with people. Wow. She'll have a room full, full of 30 people. Got it. I actually asked her one time, I'm like, how can you do that all day? She's like, no, I, I, I do it like one time, then yeah. I fake it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a way to like do it. Right, 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 30 right, right. people totally. like lift up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know the yeah, yeah. routine. Right. And she's a private trainer too. Got it. Um, so, and then Sarah, my sister Sarah, um, is a marathon runner. Mm. She's run multiple marathons. And I think her kids are now running marathons. Mm. And they're like in their early 20s. And you got, well, you guys are swimmers as well. Is this right? Swimmers. Now, my sister Lindsay was, and they're all epic swimmers. Yeah. But my sister Lindsay was like on the Olympic swim team. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Um, she was so good. And she was actually. She's done the Ironman multiple times. Wow. And she was the first woman out of the water. Mm. And she may be la like watching this and going, no, these facts are not. Like sometimes later on, I'll, yeah. I'll go, tell me a little bit more about it. She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you got that completely. <laughs> like I was not the first woman out of the water. But right. as far as I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. she was the first woman out of the water. She's yeah. incredibly athletic. Mm. They're just so, I come from a very athletic family. And you swam in high school as well, right? I swam in high school. I was yeah. captain of the swim team. Captain of the swim team. Yes, I was. Incredible, was Dave. In a Speedo. Yeah, yeah. Believe in it. In a Speedo. <laughs> in a Speedo. Ah, <laughs> Dave. All right, we're done. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, how uh, the heck <laughs> did I get this body into a Speedo? Oh, Dave, I love it. Oh, the best. Oh, man. Those were some fun That's times, funny. though, yeah. man. Some fun times. So, um, captain of the swim team. Wow, I didn't know that. Incredible. Okay. And my race yeah. was the 500, okay. which is 20 laps. Got it. Insane. Yeah. So, I, I would, like, not do well with the 50 is two laps. It's mm -hmm. a competition. Mm -hmm. So, like, people from other schools, they could do two laps fast. Mm. But after they do three or four, right. they're done. Right. So I was like a long distance swimmer mm -hmm. and um, I would just get faster once I hit 10. Wow. 11. Really? I would get, my times at the end were faster than my beginning time. Unreal. Yeah. So kind of like life, you know, Start, <laughs> starting out slow, finishing well. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Thank God uh, for that. Amen. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, so the 500, I dive in and the first, you know, six, seven laps, I might be last. Mm. But dude, they would all fall off. Wow. And I would win this almost every time. And praise the Lord, it was so fun. Yeah. It was such a fun time. Now, this these these swimmers were not, I mean, this was high school swimming. Still. So these aren't like really great swimmers. Right. And I was kind of like half swimming. Well, it's fun to win. Kind of partying a little bit and swimming. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, but it was it was fun. So um swimming, and you're also doing music in high school, is that right? We did music in high school. My mom got me a guitar. Mm. I think it was my grandmother. Mm. And my mom bought me a guitar at a um, thrift store. Mm. This junky old thing that you think like Pete Seeger was playing or something. Yeah. I'm like yeah. the 50s or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's like- Electric guitar? No. Oh, acoustic. Like this crazy, kind of looked like a, um, it kind of looks like one of those Gretches that Brian Setzer would play. Sure. But- Acoustic. Okay. So it kind of had a cool look to it, huh. but the color was kind of weird. It was okay. like this weird kind of like, like a pea yellow. Like yeah, yeah. Like this, but like a kind of mossy green. Okay. Also, it was yeah. like not a great color. Yeah. And not a great guitar. Right. Could you um, plug it in? No, it was not. It was only acoustic. Huh. Um. So I got this guitar, and then it was during the divorce times. Mm. So they thought this might be good for him to do something else. Mm. And it was, you know, to their credit, to my mom's credit and my right. grandmother's credit or whoever came up with this, um, they thought, let's get him guitar lessons, mm. you know, to take away, you know, some of the whatever. Cause you know, it, it sure. hit us hard. Totally. You know? Cause you know, my dad was not around. Right. Um, and so I learned guitar by this, this rabbi, mm. literally this guy had the, had the, um, the, yeah, yarmulke, the keeper, on, the yeah. keeper yarmulke, yeah. And he'd come and he was very strict mm. and I'd learned the three chords and he made me sing. He's like, you need to sing. You learn the chords. Now you need to sing. Mm. I'm like, oh, okay. And the first song I ever learned was Michael Row the Boat Ashore. Really? Which is like three chords. Yeah. And he would make me sing it. Yeah. And it was great though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, and that has stayed with me. Like just, I'm alone in my room or whatever. And I pick sure. up the guitar yes. and I sing my favorite songs. Totally. Or I do worship songs. And it's so, 
I was watching one of these doctors on YouTube, one of these guys, um, you know, these YouTube guys that have these, uh, I forget the name of the one guy I was watching, but he was saying that um, for the uh, vagus nerve, mm -hmm. it's uh, singing is like one of the great therapies mm. for the whole vagus nerve, which mm. is the nerve from your head that goes down through your intestines and mm. heart and stuff. It's like mm. the biggest nerve in your body. Mm. It's supposed to, like, singing is so good for that. Wow. Like, for health. Right. Like, awesome, right? Yeah, makes you feel good. Makes you feel great. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, learn how to play guitar. Then- um, You started doing bands. Started doing bands in high school. And um, junior high, we started rocking out. What kind of music? I've always been, like, a roots rocker. Yeah. So anything kind of blues, country, yeah. anything yeah. that kind of goes, comes back to the root. Totally. I just, I don't know what it is about me. Yeah. I dig it. Your root, uh, your root influences. Oh gosh. Um, I mean, Dwight Yoakam mm -hmm. was huge on me as a kid. Mm. Um, John Hyatt, mm. huge John Hyatt fan. Um, Brian Setzer. Um, gosh, the. You guys are a cover band? We were a cover band. Playing all these hits? So we played like Tom Petty. Yeah. We played like the Allman Brothers. Yeah. Uh, it was so fun. Mm -hmm. We were playing like bars and stuff and we were like 17. <laughs> that was crazy. What was your setup? What was your rig? Oh, my rig was, I had um, I had a Rickenbacker at that point. What? I had a Rickenbacker 360. Are you serious? Yes. I saved up a little and then I begged my parents and they got it for me. Dude. We went down to the city and bought it and everything. Oh it was, my gosh. It was amazing. What to have that the guitar The guitar now. is beautiful. Serious. I mean, such a beautiful, black and white. Wow, dude. Cool R on it. Oh my gosh. I mean. You got any pictures of that? I probably do somewhere. Dude, if um, you could dig it up and throw it on the screen while we're yeah, talking. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I do. Man. That's another thing I definitely need to do. I need to go through all my photos. Yep. I have years and years of photos yep. that I need to categorize. and Right. And if we get EMP'd. Right. I got to put those things in a box, you know? That's right. Those boxes that you can like, you know. That's right. Because you never know. You never know. You never know. So you're playing a Ricky. Wait, did we just get demonetized on YouTube? With maybe. The maybe. I don't know. It's possible. I don't know. You got to be careful. Um, and you're playing in bands. Um, your dad, uh, your family owns a company. My dad owned- Your family. A company, yeah. He did. Um, he ran Romanoff Caviar like for like a year. Yeah. And then he- um, Open up his own business, mm. and it was pretty successful. He, yep. did, he had, he had, you know, he had a good run. Yeah, it wasn't exploding sure. crazy, but yep. it was it was running. Sure, he had only a few employees, yep. and he had a warehouse. Right, and it was he was. Were you guys eating caviar as kids? We have videos. Really? We have, there's a there's a People magazine spread. Uh huh. Literally, like in the late seventies, uh -huh. I'll have to find it for you. My sister has, it, I think, framed. Yeah, but where they did a spot on my dad. They came to the house and they had they did like it's one of these things just a profile. They're doing an article on him, sure. So they're gonna pick a couple pictures of the family, right. That kind of thing. And we're eating caviar, in right? It, so it's kind of fun. Yeah. Anyway, it was a blast. I worked for my dad for about two years on and off, mm. and I packed stuff up in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. And the packer, this lady Ophelia, she's a great lady. She was in the back room, the, like the sterile room where they pack stuff. Yeah. And she was great. And in that room is where they pack everything, all the mm. food and all the caviar. Mm -hmm. And we have videos later on of going in there after hours mm -hmm. and like trying things and like packing, dude. Wow. It's crazy, dude. So you guys, I mean, all the cab, all the different everything, you could try it. Dude, everything. It was so, insane. I mean, is it that good? Caviar is, I am a big fan. So what, I mean, what is it? Why is it so expensive? You know, it is expensive. I think it's because it's, it's, uh. Why is it the rich man's, you know, whatever? You know what? It's, it became that. Oh, okay. It actually started, I believe, as like bar food. It was like nuts. It, really? It was like, it's like you'd catch the fish. So yeah. the guys would come in in the old days and they'd sure. have all the fish. Yeah. And then all the roe that they'd scrape out of it. Mm. They would just add salt to it and put it on the bars with like crackers and stuff. So mm. it was like peasant food. Right. And then it became over the years as like, oh, that stuff from the bar or that whatever. Like over the many years, like it became a delicacy. Did it really? So now they're scraping the row out of these fishes and they're yeah. charging top dollar right. for it. And uh, and it's really good. I mean, yeah. Very salty. Yeah. Um, but there's all different types. I mean, there's um, Savruga, there's Beluga, there's Ocetra, there's American. Um, I think it's my brother will correct me now. There's Hackleback. There's American sturgeon. There's yeah. oh man, there's all kinds. There's the Cata salmon. Which wow, is, what's the one you see a lot? Hey, if you gotta, restaurant? you, you got to take me on a caviar tour. Yes. Me and you. I will. Yeah, let's do it. I've never done it. Oh, never tasted it. 
Dude, I can, I can eat some sushi though, man. Oh, you'd like it then. I can smash some and sushi. And they put caviar on some of the sushi. Oh yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. Like the Kata salmon you see on the sushi. Okay, we got to do a tour. We got to find a place here in LA. We got to do it. It'll be fun. Your dad's running the shop. You said to me, you said to me many times that um, you kind of, you know, you grew up in a giant empty house. Yeah. So uh, it seemed like you had the stuff, but the uh, the family side of things were missing. Yeah. And that has really like anchored you into family, like in this day and age, like you and your wife, Stephanie are yeah. so invested in your kids. You guys are so invested in family. Mm. You're like, I'm going to create the home that I never had, you know, like, yeah. and um, obviously that's a part of your testimony. It's a part of the work that the Lord did because, um, you know, you, you love the experiences with your dad. Obviously you wish your parents would have been together, you know, your family in all of this in high school, but you, you know, you, the Lord took you from there, from New York um, to LA and uh this is where you found the lord but i i I always that statement's always stuck in my head you you know always said something like i'd rather have a you know i'd rather have a a a small home you know full of life and laughter and fun than a than a giant empty house rather what's the proverb rather eat vegetables with uh people you love than Mm. steak with people you Mm. don't care about Mm -hmm. at all Mm -hmm. um yeah thank you for it's cool that you remember those things Mm -hmm. um it's uh it's been awesome talking to you over the years man it's been such we've we've had such great conversations and you've really sharpened me um i've made you a little dull (laughs) anyway uh you know it's been it's i'm so blessed yeah i mean i kind of feel like sometimes people like envy the position that i'm in because i get to hang out with you Mm. because i notice people will like even my wife would be like i'll be like you know go ask him a question please you know go do it because Mm -hmm. she doesn't get any time with you right you know what i mean people want to spend time with the pastor they want mm-hmm. to talk to him right and i'm like i get to hang out with you right which is awesome i love that it worked out dave you know it's it like out. that my video my video guy's not dull yeah yeah <laughs> you know yeah. because no yeah. Anna, you know it's like because i gotta hang out with the video guy a lot yeah, that's true so it's kind of nice that the video like, guy's dave hey what do you want to do next <laughs> i don't know no Camera's ready no we've had a good time we've had a good time over the years oh totally okay well, i gotta describe you you're you you re, you're batman because on Sundays, I'll sit back behind the camera and then you'll be preaching and worshiping. And you are worshiping. When you're preaching, you're worshiping. And it's so awesome. And I'll watch, and this is my funny way of thinking about it. It's Batman. Mm. You know what I mean? And and I'm like, and, and the reason it's Batman is because when I'm hanging out with you, you're Bruce Wayne. Mm. You're this gracious, patient, awesome dude that you don't know is the batman mm. until sunday morning it's like dude it's batman dude this guy that's the same guy that's the guy the guy that just like knocked me over with some scripture <laughs> and a funny joke or whatever is the same dude that like i hang out with him friends yeah, you're with. Kind it's kind of cool you're kind dave but i'm i'm really blessed i'm in a really the lord did this for me yeah. and i'm really in a such a fun place and a great, I love doing this. I want to do many more cool projects together. This yes. is an experiment. Yes, it is. What we're yep. doing and blessed. I think I'm more bat boy, you know, <laughs> like uh, they, they send me to go get the balls, you know, like that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. totally. No, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, you know, I, I've, I try to tell the guys I'm a real guy, you know, I just yeah. like to hang out, you know, and do oh, he's a real dude. I, I don't, Trust me. you know, I just want to, yeah, I just want to be one of the brothers, you know, I want to hang out. I don't like creating all the distance between the pulpit, yeah. you know, and, and the team. No, and you don't. Yeah. That's yeah. my own like funny thing, a way of saying it. You right. don't, you're totally 100% real. And even on the pulpit, I love what you do, what you don't hear a lot of people do. You'll always make a point and then you'll go, me too. Yeah. And that resonates. I love that. I'm it's real. That. Cause yeah. it's real. It's real. And that's the thing about legacy too, is that legacy is like, we're not, cause so many of these churches are like weird. Mm. They feel weird. They mm. feel culty. People are legalistic or whatever. Right. I'm like, here, we're just broken. Yeah. And we love the Lord and we goof off and we say we're sorry. Yes. And we're, and we're repenting. And yes. it's like, it's like healthy. Yeah. It's healthy, real relationship, real people. That's what I want. A fake stuff. I, I experience a lot of, you know, I don't know. I just, I think I want that more than ever. I love authentic. I love genuine. I love real. Me too. I hate games. Can't stand games. Me too. Um, and, um, I don't know, I don't even know why I built a complex against that stuff, but like, I, 
I think I'd always sniff that stuff out, you know, as soon as I felt, if I couldn't feel the genuine and authentic, you know, then all of a sudden it's just like, nah, I, I, I'm just not, it's not attractive. Yeah. You know, like I, I love, um, I love when people let their hair down and become relaxed and easygoing yep. and laid back and just be themselves and feel the same just, way a hundred percent. And that's maybe we connect on that, that yep. way that we're just raw, you know, it's just like where it is, what it is. Mm -hmm. you know? And how many times have I said, sorry yeah. about that? <laughs> Well, that's the thing. I mean, you, it, the New York in you, you know, it's like, I kind of, yeah. I love it. I yeah. think that's, I mean, that's a, they say uh, what you hate about the New Yorker, you love about the New Yorker that they'll always, they'll tell you straight to your face, you know, how they're feeling or what they think. Sure. And you may not be able to digest it, but it's, 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 at least they're being honest. The LA person is a little bit scary, you know, because they don't always tell you the truth to your face. So they'll, they'll kind of like hide, you know, and then, yeah, uh, that's it. And, um, and so it's, it's, it's two polar opposites, but yeah, I think I, I saw that early on, you know, you, uh, you're a man of the word, you are, uh, have this knack for media, um, as I would come to learn, you know, you're kind of always feeling a person out at first. You're like, for okay, sure. am I, am I going to hand our media, you know, over, you know, to, to this person, what is that going to look like long-term? What are they going to do? Especially coming from harvest, you know, yeah. such high level media Oh, for sure. and all this production. And so I was just like. I think what was fascinating about you, Dave, is that I could see very quickly that you actually love film. And like when we start talking about film, I want to get in the nitty gritty of shots and plot and uh, these directors and like, you know, why they're doing what they're doing. And then you would go so far as to get to the root of the storyline and how it's influencing and affecting people. And that really stuck out to me. You're like, no, no, like this narrative is doing this in people. And that's why that's evil. Oh yeah. And that's dark and that's not good. And then you're like, but then, you know, you, you could, you could watch a heavy movie, but you could also pull out godly attributes throughout the film. Sure. And, uh, that stuck out to me, you know, very quickly. And then gosh, you know, gear like so well, like you actually know gear. So like when I need to, I, I research stuff. I know, so, but it, I don't know it right now, all the new things, but if we needed to do new things, I would do I know how to like research things. Yeah, which you do too. You're like, well, it's kind of like it's kind of like the too. well, it's kind of like the difference between somebody who says like they know a lot about cars and like all they can do is kind of like change the fender, you know, or like and not change that's yeah, yeah, bad. Yeah. So it would change. They, got you. they can maybe change the oil or they can you know, I don't know, put gas yeah, you know the put ins gas and outs on the car of, camera, of cameras. The, yeah. and, the, and the principles don't change. You and actually know. Saying, yeah, I know cameras. You actually know the inner workings For of sure. the camera. You know, the iris, the focus, the yes. color temperature, yeah. all those different things, yeah, the, yeah. the shutter speed, all the, the 180 shutter. People right. are like, what the heck's that? Well, the first time I saw this was when you're like, I don't remember when it was, but you're like, no, what you don't understand is like, I know this camera is three grand and it looks like a great camera and everybody's saying it's the best, but this $400 camera does the exact same thing. And I'm like, what? Yeah. And, and then he's like, and actually it's brand new. It's like 700, but you can, we can find it used in excellent condition for like 450. And I was like, what? And yeah. you're like, look at the sensor is the, you know, you started going through the whole thing and you're like, it's the exact same thing. They're fooling everybody with the gear. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Dave knows his gear. Yeah, totally. He actually knows his hey, gear. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's uh But so many media people do not know their gear. All they know is what's the top whatever and they just yeah, buy yeah. that thing and they just do it. And, and it's then like, that's all they talk about. Not the content they've made or how it could be better, like the actual shots right. and everything else. They're like, Oh, do you have a full frame? I got the full frame, I got the new lens. Yeah, and I got the yeah. one I'm like, Oh, is it Sony? Well it better be Sony. Because <laughs> if it isn't Sony, then it's not even gonna be a good quality. Oh, I love it. Full frame isn't is the way to go. You uh who bought you the uh your first uh video? Uh, piece my mom i got this is part of my testimony is after i and i know this happened after i heard the gospel message i had like just like a week of like just thinking about things like life and death and the lord and everything and uh, during that time period somehow i got the bug for like photography and filmmaking mm. during that whole time period. Mm. Like it literally started then. So cut to my mom, I forget what birthday it was, but it was like maybe 10 or something or 11. Yeah. 
she got me a Super 8 camera. Yes. And she, my mom was like- You got to throw that up on the screen, My Dave. mom was awesome. What does yeah. a Super 8 look like? Oh, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So throw the picture up on the screen. Yeah, hilarious. Uh, I, I want to find one. No, yeah. That, what is it? Well, I mean, Super 8, you know, put it's uh, around. Google or whatever and yeah, see yeah. if you can find one of those things. Okay, yeah, I'll have to do that. Um, Anyway, you're giving me more work, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to see Keep it. it easy. I want to see it. Yeah, totally. You don't. So I, you, but you had the legendary Super Eight camera. The legendary. It is the legendary. It is legendary. Um, but but there was like okay, Canon made one. Okay. Uh, Nikon made. I think Moy made one. Uh, sh- like a lot of Chinese knockoffs. So they're all a bunch of Super Eight cameras. So Super Eight was the size. So you have 35 millimeter film. You have 16 millimeter film. You got Super 16, which was one perf. Then you've got Super 8. Then you had regular 8 millimeter, which was two perfs. Then you had Super 8, which was one perf. So the Super was one perf. Mm. So you could have more room for picture and sound. It was a little bit bigger, I think. I mean, it was the soundtrack on there or something. But there was Super 8 sound as well. Mm. Anyway, so my mom got me this camera, and I just started making tons of movies. Mm. And each cartridge, you had to go get developed. So the, the camera would take a film cartridge that would run about three and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes? Yeah. And then you had to take the cartridge to the guy Uh and wait a week. And you'd get this little roll of film back. Okay. And you'd watch your dailies. And it was awesome. And eventually I got the editing system too. I would say you had to buy a projector, right? So you could watch it. I had to buy a projector to watch it at home. So I got a projector. I think we got like a used projector or something like first or something. And then I ended up getting more gear later, Mm -hmm. better gear. And better camera later too. Mm. So the first camera I had was pretty cool, and then later on I got the Canon camera a couple of years later. But um, then I had I got the editing system where you can see on the screen you bring the film through on these two reels. Yeah, and you bring the film through, and then you can edit right there. And you it cut was it. Amazing. You're, I could start it's like editing. Razor blade cut or something. Yeah, it was a razor blade cut. And then it would tape the tape it together. That's right. So what you do is you'd cut the film and then you'd um you'd take the other piece that you'd have hanging somewhere, mm-hmm. the shot that you want to cut in. Yeah. You know? And then you'd play that in and then you'd put the tape over. There was a special way. Mm. It was like a band-aid where you opened up one side and mm. the other side of the mm-hmm. tape. And you delicate, and then there were spikes through the the film, mm. through the, the sprockets. That's right. There were spikes holding it all together, and yeah. then you'd put the tape over the sprockets. So some of my early edits were like not the best. They'd run through the projector like, you know. Oh wow! So you'd have to get real good at it, right? So it'd be seamless, right? Um, Do you still have any of those? I mean, any of those? I have all my old films. You have them? Yeah. <gasps> Oh, they're a blast. Dave. It's so fun. Are you kidding me? I, I haven't even shown my kids all that stuff. Yet. What, Dave? You got to show them. Oh, my gosh. Fun. Dude. Fun stuff. You got this Christmas. That's a great Christmas gift, oh, Dave. Oh, yeah. You should do it. You should do it. I want to retransfer them because Maybe I do- have them on film still, too. But yeah. I have them on video as well. Your earliest, like, best, you know, like, a little short film. I made an Indiana Jones movie that was, like, 20 minutes long. What? And I'm Indiana Jones. Are you kidding me? And I'm, like, probably, like, 13 or something. No way. Like the whole thing with the idol with the hand and the fingers. Dave, this is so cool. You got to put fun. these on YouTube, Dave. Yeah. We taped firecrackers to each other to each other for the gunshots. Dude, these things could be gold. Yeah. No, they're not that good. No, they could be. One of my favorites, I'll tell you, was one we called because no one gets to see this stuff anymore. Yeah, I guess you're. I guess you're right. I mean, we could we could revisit them and made by a 13 year old kid. Yeah, in in 197, you know, whatever 1980, whatever it is. You know, I think this was this was like you know like in like the like the huge picture of everything. This was happening. Kids were doing this. Wow. So I mean, you hear stories like yeah. Spielberg did this, Ron Howard did this. Right. Um, a lot of people did it, and a lot of people that I would meet later would say, "Yeah, I had a film camera as a kid. I made mm. all these movies." So it was kind of happening, mm. and um, it was it was cool. It was but, so yeah, fun. But that's the thing you you've been able to touch the very early cameras and video cameras, and you've been handling these things for yeah forever 30, 40, 40 years now. Wow. And you know, I got to tell you, this is such a cool thing because I, I'm literally probably one of the, one of the last generations to touch film. Wow. Where we, where I went from super eight as a kid to going into film school and working with 16 millimeter. Okay. And then going, getting jobs and doing and cutting, um, reel to reel video, Mm. like analog video in real time where you have to like edit in sequence. 
and then moving into digital editing. Trip. So we did all that. And it gives you a real good, almost like a music theory or something, mm -hmm. but like mm -hmm. a film, handling the film theory. I mean, you can obviously jump into nonlinear editing right now and be awesome. Mm. Um, but the way my brain works, you know, I've done, it's been so cool. Yeah, frame by frame. And that was the other thing with like video games. Like I've always been like a <clears throat> big fan of the video game business. Mm -hmm. Like big fan of Atari and yeah. all that. What was your first console? My first console was the ColecoVision. What? Which, which, I don't know what that is. Oh, legendary. Okay. You got to look it up. Okay. ColecoVision. Shame was, on thee. Yeah. Dude, you got to check it out. I got to educate you on this. Okay. The, uh, the ColecoVision came out in like 81, 82, maybe 82. Okay. I got it at Christmas, mm. and it was packed with a game called Donkey Kong. Yes. Yes. I it played was, it in Nintendo. It was incredible. Yeah. So, like, mind's blown. We played it in the arcade, but it was like Coleco got it where it was, like, looking just like the um, video game from the arcade. Mm. So they got it real close. Mm -hmm. But anyway, what I was saying was is that kind of like the film stuff where I've had my hands on things, mm -hmm. when I was born, Pong was coming out. Mm. And then when I'm 10, Pac-Man was in the arcades, wow. Space Invaders. Right. And so I really had this, I've had this really fun, and it's all the Lord. You rode the I, wave. I, I rode the wave. And I watched the industry, like kind of from my own like perch, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I watched what's going on. I still have a lot of fun watching what's happening with like, you know, the PlayStation 5 mm -hmm. and all the handhelds there. Like I just have, it's a fun hobby mm. to do and i don't buy everything or play everything mm. but i observe the industry mm. and it's it's just been really fun it's mm -hmm. just like it's a hobby of mine but i do collect um like i don't collect like i'm in a, at a massive scale like some room you walk into it's like whoa your collection yeah but i do collect some like retro yeah items that are cool yeah like the pac-man yep. machine that yeah. we got you yes that one is like super retro yes super fun very cool those items are like like uh, the, the the buttons are made. Beep, beep, beep. I mean, the yes. er, everything feels like the arcade. I mean, it's like so the joystick cool. and just it's yeah. So cool, so cool. And the kids love it. So anyway, I feel like we're all over. I'm all over the place. With so, different but topics. So, so we, uh, well, no, super. Oh, yeah. Wait, did our did our audience drop off yet? No, not yet. No, no, no. So goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you've left already, uh, we'd like you to know that um, we're upset with you. So you're <laughs> right. You better get back on. Yeah. Uh, your mom bought you the Super 8 camera, and then uh, you made it to USC film. Oh, USC, man. I, okay, I literally, I, I worked on a movie. Okay, here this is an interesting story. Um, I was at film school in New York. Parsons New School for Social Research mm -hmm. had a film department. And they had a 16 millimeter production course where you'd make your own film. And it was a certificate program. And at the same time, my mom said, why don't you take some classes because you know if you ever transfer into another school it'd be good you can transfer classes in mm -hmm. so i took like a first year's worth of college classes at like a local community college okay while i was going to this certificate program got it just to keep busy yeah because you know and and kids were going off to colleges they're going off to yale and this and that and i wasn't i didn't know what i wasn't ready right so um i went into the city and i was so into movies and so i learned from um my film teacher, Pablo Frascani, mm. who I have a funny story about him, I'll tell you in a minute. Um, but anyway, it was a 16 millimeter class. There was a guy in that class, name was Rob Weiss, mm. an old friend of mine. And he said, after that class, he's like, let's just go make a real movie. What? And the guy did it. Amazing. I was the second assistant director. Wow. And um, How old it are was, you guys? It was a lot of work. How old are you? Oh, gosh. I mean, I must have been... 19. Wow. 20. Yeah. So anyway, he gets like a three picture deal at Universal. What? And I'm like in the trailer with him. Like, uh, I don't get it. You know, well, he gets it. And and, I, and he's like, dude, you got to come work with me. You got to come work with me. And literally I had gotten into film school. I had transferred into USC. Mm. I got in, um, I got a couple great recommendations mm -hmm. and I got accepted to USC. And I was like, at that point, I'm like, you know what? I want to go to Juilliard. I want to go to you. I want to be like, I want to be classically trained. Yep. I want to be a part of something. Totally. You know what I mean? I'm like this divorced kid. I don't feel like I have like the family's connected, glued together real well. I want to be a part of an institution or yes. something that's like, I want to be classically trained. Yep. So USC was that for me. Mm. 
and um, it was a blast. So, so you showed up here at 19, 20 years old? I moved out here when I was 21, actually. 21. 21. Mm-hmm. So we had made that movie. Uh, Rob directed that movie um, that I, you know, I worked on, and um, I had edited all his uh, his um, student films, and we had a great relationship with working together. Mm. Um, okay, so my teacher, this was interesting. My teacher from Parsons New School, Pablo, he said, uh, "Hey, I'm happy to write you a recommendation to USC Film School, mm. but why don't you stick around here? I stick around in." Uh, New York, because New York, this is where, this is where, you know, Woody Allen, and mm-hmm. like, this is like documentary, and this right. is like, this is where the real movies are made. Right, this right. is the place to be. You know, you don't want to go out to California, it's all fluff out there. I'm like, mm. I kind of like Lethal Weapon. It's like one of my favorite movies. Right. Like, I want to blow stuff up. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. I mean, Lethal Weapon is the best, right? Right, right, right. those right. guys joking around. I mean, oh, yeah. this is movie making. Right. Right? And like, well, to them, maybe it isn't. I don't know. But, um... So he wrote me a recommendation. A year later, I'm walking on the USC campus with my backpack going to some class. So blessed. Mm -hmm. I see my teacher, Pablo. What? He's walking towards me. I go, Pablo, what are you doing here? He's like, they hired me as the uh, graduate documentary film teacher. Wow. I'm here. Unreal. I'm like, no way, dude. Crazy. Crazy, right? Crazy, crazy. Sold out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, that's so cool, right? Right. So cool. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, yeah, it's been, USC was such a, such a ton of fun. It so was did, a real blessing to go there. Yeah. I mean, you uh, sharpen your craft. I mean, all the classes, you, all the labs, um, you get to, and um, you, um, were you working in a video store at some time as well? Is that where, where did you get all your film education? You know, I have, I had some crazy friends. Um, one of my friends, Pete Avellino mm-hmm. from high school mm. was a cinema nerd. Mm. I mean, this guy liked everything from, you know, sci- sci-fi horror all the way to like silent movies mm-hmm. and he knew stuff. Mm. And him and his dad had had a close relationship where they'd watch the Marx Brothers and, mm. you know, um, all the old classics. I mean, the Hitchcock and, uh, you know, uh, Preston Sturges movies and those kinds of things. And- he really poured into me mm. when I said, I love movies. He'd be like, well, you got to see this or you got to see this. Got see it. It. And then there was another guy at um, one of the places that we used to play, one of the bars we used to play at late. This is a little bit after high school. Um, he said, hey, you like movies? And we started talking and he like, you got to see this. Let me give you my top 10 of what you need to see. Mm. So by the time I got to USC transferred over, I had seen like probably close to like the top 100 movies that the AFI would say these are the, at that time, Sure, these are the top 100 movies you should see if wow. you love movies. I mean, I, I just absorbed and I loved movies. Any specific movie that just like impacted you like forever? You're like, I want to do this. Like or any specific director, you know, just like you know, when, think, it, when you saw that film. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, I mean, this is kind of weird. It's part of my testimony as well. Um, but, and I say weird because I wrestle with some of the aspects of it because of the old man and the new man. Sure. We're talking to Christians now. Yes. Um, and they would know what we're talking about. Right. I mean, and that's not to say that you don't, okay, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. The old man is the old self. Yeah. The new man, the new self is, you know, we're born again. Yes. And, um. New creation in Christ Jesus, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's right. And then you can look it up in John chapter three, where Nicodemus comes and talks mm. to Jesus about it. It's a beautiful chapter about born again. how we become born from above born yes. and born spiritually. And it really does change your life and it changes your desires. And so the old self going to USC, but mm-hmm. uh, that was dominating, a big fan of John Carpenter. Mm. And um, still love John Carpenter. Mm-hmm. Conflicted with some of, mm-hmm. some of the themes. His big stuff. films. Oh gosh, um, Halloween, his mm-hmm. biggest movie, mm-hmm. um, the original. Got it. And it still holds up. It's great. Yeah. Um, and it's, and he's really not too in, insanely disgusting or whatever. Yeah. He's actually really he's a he's a craftsman. Right. Um, so and then I guess one of his movies that affected me greatly that I just loved on a pure entertainment level mm-hmm. um, didn't move me like some emotional thing, mm-hmm. but it, but it just got me excited about the fun of movie making and stuff mm-hmm. was they live mm. when they live came out the theaters. It was a game changer. Mm. 
I saw it twice in the theaters, mm. and then it was gone. Like it didn't do well at all. Wow. And um, it's the it's affected our culture even to this day. You see, like those obey signs and the obey hats. Oh no way! It does the fashion. Yeah. Yeah, and they, and yeah. they use it Shepherd now. Shepherd Fairy. For sure. And then they use it now for um, a lot of like uh, politically subversive things. They'll use that stuff. Because the movie mm. has, the movie fires on so many different cylinders. Okay. It's a Western. It's a sci-fi thing. It's, mm. a, it's um, you know, it's a dystopian nightmare. It's, um, it's a hero picture. It's, it's, just, it's just really fun. Now, it's super campy though. Mm. So you got to be into that. Mm. It's and then not everybody likes it because it is cheesy. Okay. There's a cheese to it. Yeah. But there's something that Carpenter had where he could do the cheese. Like if you ever watch Big Trouble in Little China, mm-hmm. like he just nails the right amount of like that's like so pathetically ridiculous mm. and awesome. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. whatever it is. Right, right. I, I can't put my finger on it. But anyway, um, yeah, so he was a really big influence on me, uh, John Carpenter. Got it. It's funny because you get to USC and people are like, "Oh, you hear you're at USC? Do you, you must love George Lucas." Right. It's like he's he's everybody loves George Lucas. I'm like, I kind of not really. I mean, right. I like George Lucas. Sure, he's, he's a good guy. Right, right. The best thing I think George Lucas ever did was you ever see this movie? It's called Tucker the Man and His Dream. No. Oh, you gotta see it. Okay, it's great. It's about uh, the car, the Tucker car. Okay, yeah, it's uh, and it's with uh, Jeff Bridges, mm. directed by Francis Coppola, the guy that did Godfather. Yeah, it's the best thing Lucas I think has ever. I mean, of course, everyone loves Star Wars. Sure, this movie Tucker the Man in the Dream is such a great movie. Wow, just a brilliant movie about the real guy that made the car, the Tucker. Okay. And it takes on the big three. I got to see this. Oh, it's it's fantastic. You'll love it. Yeah. See, I love these, Dave. You always, you always recommend these obscure films yeah. that like nobody's seen. Yeah. But they're so good. Oh, you're, you're kind. These little diamonds just sitting out there that nobody, because if you're a creator, you know, like you'll, you'll really appreciate these, this type of stuff. Yeah. You know what movie I want you to see? I want you to see The Edge. Mm. It's, uh, it's really good. Okay. It's with uh, Alec Baldwin. Okay. Like, oh, Alec Baldwin. He's just politically right. Like we don't like. He's and he's and by the way, he's not even a good actor. <laughs> like, he's, he's an incredible actor. Right. But well, well, however you think about him personally, sure. you're right. like, okay, yeah, sure. Right, right. I don't like half the things the guy says. Sure. But like, he's you can't throw him under the bus. He's an amazing actor. Right. Anyway, he's in this movie and it's so good. The Edge. The Edge. Okay. Recommend The Edge. Okay. I recommend, um, what else can I tell our, our audience to, to see? Yeah. Um, gosh. I saw an interesting movie just the other night. It was uh, called like The Noah Letter or something. Mm. Directed by Charles Shire. Mm. Really good on Netflix. Mm-hmm. I was really impressed with it. Mm. Yeah, it was really good. Like kind of like a heartwarming romantic, but the, but the, but this uh, father and son kind of come together at the end. Mm-hmm. It's just strange relationship. It was really good. What do you think best films of all time? I mean, it, you know, it, when you just think like these are, these are the the top five, top ten. Like they're they're just never going away. Like these, these obli- I mean, I know you're struggling with personal yeah. taste and uh, sure. and and what the, you know, what all of Hollywood or what all of the world says is like, you know. But these are like the staple films that basically shaped all of all of film. Oh, well, I mean, you know, Citizen Kane, obviously. Right. The ones that people would say, you right. know, um, anything by Preston Sturges or Billy Wilder, mm. anything by Hitchcock. Mm. I mean, these were the guys that, like, just knew how to cut. They would know They know how to, you know, in the old days, you'd have a script and you'd, um, you'd block it. And you wouldn't cut unless there was meaning. There would be cut. Like, if, the, like we, if we're in the middle of the table here, we had, like, a knife, right? Mm-hmm. The knife is right there. Well, in the wide shot, we're talking, we're talking, we're talking, and we cut to the, when we cut to the close up of the knife, it's going to have some meaning, right? Mm. So we don't. So cuts are really powerful. Mm. And now you watch these, like, you know, just your typical like Hallmark junk or whatever. And this, and those movies are fine. The scripts are fine. Sure. And they're fine because all these Christmas ones are on right now. Right. So I'm referencing that because I've just seen like three of them. Right. Um, and they're fun, but they literally they do they they do shot. Like if they were t- doing us, it would be shot, shot, shot. Hey, whoever's talking, they got their own shot. I'm talking, I got a shot. I'm talking, I have a shot. Sure. I'm talking, I have a shot. Right. Cut, cut, cut. Right, cut, right, right, cut. right. Well, that's not. I mean, you're 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 resetting my brain every time. Got it. Which you want to use that to your advantage. Mm. 
when you're cutting. Mm. So you get guys like the newer guys like Tarantino or Christopher Nolan. They understand these things. Mm. You don't just cut all, you know what I mean? And this is in the old days, Hitchcock and um, Billy Wilder and like these guys knew how to make these. Or uh, William Wyler, mm. great stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, my favorite movies are like They Live and mm -hmm. like uh, another great one is The Narrow Margin. Mm. Gene Hackman, love mm. that one. Mm -hmm. My brother and I were talking about this the other night. Mm. I like thrillers. Mm. Probably my favorite genre yeah. is a good thriller. And you made uh, you made some films out of SC, right? Uh, yeah, no, or it dur during college or right out of college? Yeah, we made some uh, in school. You have to make a few films. Sure. So we we had a class where we made movies, and yep. that was that was fun. Um, and I also DP'd a bunch of films for other people, mm. so that was really cool. Mm. Um, yeah, good times, man. That's what I love about you, Dave. Is that you're not only a mechanics guy, like when it comes to um, the gear, mm. but you're also a, a deep student of film. And not just uh, like you're just breaking down the cuts like right now. You're just like there, there's a, there's a science and a and a philosophy behind this and how sure. it works. But then not only that, you take it to the next level spiritually, and you know there is a there's a message being said, and there's something being told. Oh yeah, through every program, through ev all TV shows, through anything, every anything that is funded that you are watching from that's on TV. Literally Netflix, Disney, whatever. I mean, they all were funded, mm. and they're and and they've they've you know I don't know when exactly someone's probably tracking this, mm. but you know the relationship between there's things we probably can't say will get thrown off YouTube like names and things like that, sure. but like the relationship between you know wh whoever's wants to, yeah, whoever it is who wants to influence, right? Okay. When you want to influence, what? how are you going to influence? Well, you can go lobby Washington with your lobby guys on the steps and take meetings and sure. all that other stuff. Hey, we want to influence you. We want to give this money to your campaign, whatever. Right. Blah, blah, blah. right. Well, the, the the greatest influence is the TV screens and the movies. Right. So they're laden with subversive, not only advertising that isn't subversive mm. half the time because mm -hmm. we can pick a lot of that off. Right. But some of it is. Right. But it's 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 filled with political medical mm. information they want you to know about. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, it's so funny that like a lot of times before a global event or a national event, there's some kind of blockbuster in the movie theaters mm. a year or two before. Mm. Giving everybody some kind of global mm. like consciousness about that topic. Interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah they're almost like uh, subtly educating. There's a collective, like we're educating you collectively so when something this other thing happens, you kind of have a reference point of like what we. How so you kind of so you kind of fall right into the story. So, sort of, yeah. What is the? Um, but see, that's the thing is most people don't see uh, TV shows and movies; they just see it as pure entertainment. For sure. But it is interesting that back in the uh, what fifties or sixties when it came out, they used to call it programming. Programming. That's programming. Right. That's right. Program. They still call it program, don't they? Well, program. TV, yeah, TV program is yeah. kind of not, they call it more like a show now. Yeah. It's more entertainment based. Like it yeah. sounds more like, oh, did you watch the show? Did you watch the new docu? Did you watch the new series? Did you want, but it, yeah. they used to call it programming. Yeah. And it is, but see, most people do not look at media from that angle. But um, do they want to. I've gotten in so many arguments with people, no, you're, no, you can't look at, and then I'm not saying every, no, look, there's a saying, Sometimes a banana is just a banana. You know what I mean? Sure. Like it's not. It's not like. Uh, it's not like it's everything is. You know what I mean? Well, but sometimes I mean a lot of times but, it isn't. Especially today with like the top down stuff. Sure. I mean, what's well? Look at all the stuff that's happening today right. since the pandemic. No, totally. This isn't coming up from the streets. Right. This is coming from the media top down. No, totally. These influences. So it's happening. But even the most mild director has some agenda. Totally. He's like, I want these, I want people watching this to feel love. Or they're yeah. like, yeah, that's yeah, exactly right. Or they're like, I got to make this movie. Um, and I want to make this movie, but I need the money. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put a little bit of this thing in there. Well, know, my favorite, whatever it might be. Well, my favorite is like, you know, you're in this deep, you know, like you're in this, you know, deep war film, you know, and you're out in the middle of nowhere. And like, you're in some, like they're in some foreign territory and there's dust on the table, you know, and like two people sitting there and like this guy's kind of like, you know, and then all of a sudden the Coke, the Coca-Cola can is right there perfectly positioned looking at the camera and he pops it and, you know, and he, 
you're like, yeah, you know, this war is crazy. You know, it's oh, like, it's, and, and it's like, so true. Uh, hello, that was inserted on purpose to get you to buy Coca Cola. Oh, yeah. And Coca Cola paid big money to get that in the film. Oh, yeah. So it, it's like, but uh, people don't see this stuff, they don't no. see it anywhere. But no. really, if you, you know, if we were to do a film, we would write down the things that we want people to feel and we want them to experience and the ultimate goal and agenda for this thing. For we're sure. hoping to accomplish this. For sure. And so, no doubt the powers that be want, uh, to accomplish something. Oh, for sure. And, uh, whether it's purely evil, uh, whether they know it's evil or not, no one, you know, it's hard. Yeah. That's hard to put your finger on. You gotta decipher that yourself. Yeah. Whether or not they just want to make a ton of money. That is the Who agenda. want to make a ton of money. Right. And so they solicit to the sins of people. Yep. Um, because people love sin. And so they just want to watch that. We love our sin. But Dave, you've been really good at, um, over the years, I, I love the conversations that we've had around these discussions. It's like, yeah, but you know, in this film, they did this, 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 or in this book, they did this, 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 or in this TV show, they did this, this, this. And you, you have an ability to cut through all the fog and like see what they were up to and what message it's sending to people. This is a gift. Uh, because again, not only Praise do you, you know the mechanics, the way the camera's working and the way they're turning the camera to make you feel or think a certain way, but you also know the editing room and you also know storylines and plots. And then you also know the spiritual side to everything, you know, like, and so it's, it's kind of like this, this full package deal and you're a musician. So it's like, you get the, uh, you get the feels, the soul side of it too. You know, there's, uh, it's like all of this put together. Um, is really a, a beautiful recipe for, I don't know, I think breaking down film and understanding it really well and being able to, um, you know, help people understand media through a proper lens. And you and Stephanie have been so good at this, you know, you I know, think over the you. years. Thanks for saying that. I feel like, the, I mean, you're, you too. I mean, you also have that gift that you can just break things down and do all that. And you're a musician as well. You're, you're like, you what, what's so cool about you is that you literally do like everything like 99% well. You literally do. Like you kind do. Of. No, you do. You can like, you're like a carpenter, you're a musician, you're a pastor, you're a preacher, teacher, you know, your husband, you're, uh, you do like, you know, sports and, uh, you know, the gym and all that. You do uh, surfing. Mm -hmm. Like, and you do all these things. And, and I know like, like you'll, you'll play for us. Um, uh, when like Ben won't make it to the men's group or whatever, like mm -hmm. he's got something going on and you'll, you'll fit in, you'll fill in and dude, you're, it's like, dude, this is ridiculous. Like if you went, like, you're not even like working that out, those muscles. Yeah. Like, it's just like, but like, if you, like you have so many gifts in so many areas, which is uh, totally amazing, man. Totally beautiful. Anyway, so I feel like we like we're we when we come together, yeah, and we start rapping and talking and doing yeah. all these things. We're like these two like uh, I don't know what's the word like we're just like yeah we're just like we just kind of like just connect on all these on all yeah. these different random levels yeah because we just like you said it once about music you're like mm -hmm. I like all music mm -hmm. it's well produced yeah I'm like how'd you just like like totally that's it that's yeah. it. that's the only way you say it yeah I like all music yeah and I like all movies yeah that are well produced I like all art yeah. So we kind of, I just get like, it's cool. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And music, you know, it's almost like anybody who does their craft like super well with excellence and they found that soul part of any genre of music and it fires. It's just like, this is a good song. You know, it's like, regardless of genre, this thing just hits, you know, like it totally. just, and it does something to you. And uh, movies do the same thing. I was mm. into comedies, mm. dramas, mm -hmm. you know, everything. You know, mm -hmm. another one of my favorite movies, actually, I got a shout out to this. Mm. If anyone's interested, uh, is Albert Brooks's Real Life. Mm. It's so funny. Albert Bro Brooks. Albert Brooks, yeah, he's a comedian. Real Life. What advice on media and digesting uh, movies, television, you know, all that kind of stuff? Like, what, what, what is the litmus test? So, like, what, how, how do you filter what? what to absorb, what not to, what are the force fields that you put up when watching things? Like how, how do you, how do you do it? No, no. How do you do it? Take a number. Yeah. Yeah. No. How do you, how do you do it for your family? How do you do it for you and Stephanie? How do you get like, what do you, what do you allow in? What do you not allow in? Like what, what, what are the parameters? Or you things know, we you go out, we trick or treat. Yeah. Um, we watch, you know, a spooky ghost story movie. Sure. Um, you know, it's, you know, if they want to watch Harry Potter, we'll watch that. They've mm -hmm. they haven't asked to. You know what I mean? It's it's fine. But you guys always talk about it afterwards. We just talk about it. You know, we'll talk about it. I mean, we're not watching things that are X-rated or sure. or like horror sure. rated real. Yeah. That's obvious. Yeah. 
Um, but it's pretty much, I mean, we're, we're just navigating the culture. Yeah. Kids have gotten really good at it themselves yeah. where they can just see the agendas being. Cause played. you guys have trained them. I guess so. Yeah. We've just through, com- through conversation. They're all little filmmakers. I mean, yeah. they're literally, they're talking about the shots. That's cool. I mean, it's like, and, and they're like, oh, that close up, you know, Hannah will be like, oh, that close up was too close. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't have been there. They should have approached it from like, well, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know? And your kids act. And they're great actors. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They were in this amazing production company where they did all these shows. Mm-hmm. You came to one of them. Yes. It was so great, man. Yeah. It was so fun. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming out. Of um, course. I forget what no, what my wife knows. She's she's saying right now as she's watching this. It was that one. Mm-hmm. I'm not remembering which one it was. There were so many. I was in the back there with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. There was like 20. They probably did over 20 shows. Wow. And it was like, I don't know, five or six year run where, because um, the pandemic killed it. Mm-hmm. And um, the kids are so talented. My kids, and they love to act and mm-hmm. they loved to dance and mm-hmm. they loved to sing. And they mm-hmm. just had a, they had a blast. Now they haven't done it for a while, so they're getting a little. Mm-hmm. They need. I think they're still want to do it. Um, Kate's really good at voices. Mm. She can do all kinds of cartoon voices. Wow! And she's really talented with writing. Mm. So she she wants to do voiceover. Um, uh, Nick, I don't know if Nick has. A, I mean, Nick wants to be in our movie that mm-hmm. we're gonna make. We're gonna make a film. Yes. We're gonna make a sci-fi crazy yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. Stay tuned. With the family. With the family, yeah. It's going to be fun. But I want Nick in that. I want him to grow his hair long. Yeah. Because he's got to wear the patch. You know, he's got to be the- Yeah, yeah. Our version of Snake Plissken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. But uh, anyway, but he doesn't like his hair growing long. Mm-hmm. You're basically saying you're open to watch almost anything, but you guys are always going to talk about it after and kind of find the, the gospel things in it, find the godly things in it, but also kind of throw away the dark things in it or sure. like learn how to process that. For sure. Um, I mean, we're not obviously, once again, for people watching, we're not showing them everything. I mean, totally. obviously not anything yeah. that's, they don't want us. To- and, and you guys have governed, you guys have governed a lot of stuff over the year. I mean, I, you've told me, Dave, it's just like, it's like as they've grown into age, you've like slowly let them see more and more, but basically yeah. you've kept the lid on a lot of stuff for until, sure. until the time has come. One of our recent like lids that blew off was I wanted Nick to see Psycho mm. because um, the originals 19... And Nick's, Nick's how old? He's now, 17 now. 17, yeah. And so he's seen other rough movies. He's seen sure. like Taken and, right. the, and that kind of stuff, yep. which is pretty powerful. And like right. after, and Terminator 2 affected him. Right. And Terminator 2 is like, I mean, it's pretty, it can be pretty dystopian, scary, sure. you know? Yeah. Um, what a great movie. There's a yep. movie that ruined a franchise right, right. there. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's no other Terminator movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's like. Right. Terminator 2, that's it, right? right. Our next retreat, we're going to we're gonna play that, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest. Yeah. Uh, part one's great too though. Um, yeah, Nick, um, I wanted to show him psycho because Mm -hmm. I think it's an important film. Mm. Um, I think he needs to be able to talk about it Mm. with, if he's, cause he likes movies Yeah, and you should see it. Sure. And my wife for a while was like, oh, it's really scary. It's really creepy. It's, it's, it's perverted. Right. It's got some like perversion things in it. And as a Christian family, we don't want to, we don't want to unnecessarily expose you to those things. So we talked, we talked about it a lot. Yeah. And we finally saw it. He thought it was not scary at all. Mm. He thought it was a great movie, mm. um, great story. I mean, watching it again myself, I was like, wow, this is so well put together. Mm. But there is that, and this is a whole nother podcast, but we'll 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 wrap it down. But um, there is that for myself. What do I allow myself to, to view? Mm-hmm. Because the old guy saw everything. Right. And so there are movies in the past that are so good, mm. you know, probably made by Satan himself. Mm. They're so well done, the wow. editing and everything, but they're violent, right? Or they're disrespectful, right. or they're perverted, right? And movies in general really does. It's interesting that movies exploded or the technology exploded during this time period of like kind of darkness. And mm. I mean, movies are. I mean. I can't, I mean, there's a lot of positive things about movies, but there's a lot of negativity too. Mm-hmm. Movies really are, they put you in a God-like spot mm. where you're almost, I mean, really you're God, right? Because mm. you're watching someone's life, like almost like in, Interesting. Like a, in a way God would watch you. Wow. And then you're, there's lusting. There's mm. movies where you're looking in a window mm. and there's all that. I mean, movies are, are filled with lust mm. and there's filled with like, um, you know, little perversions or stuff. So there's directors like David Lynch that ha- is 
maybe bent this way or something like that or whatever. And it's in the film. Right. And then you're watching it. So is he, is he giving you a taste of that perversion? Mm. Well, sort of. Mm. I mean, there's no way to unwind that. Right. The movies are like, I've seen the David Lynch movies and they're fantastic. Mm. But there's no way to unwind that the guy's offering you a taste of some weird perverted thing. Got it. And so that is where I draw the line now. That's where you draw the line. As a Christian, yep. you know, I've seen those movies before. Right. I don't want to see anything. I, I'll 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 see new releases that are coming out, and um, I'll just say I'm not going to see that. Yeah. Or if I if I'm interested in it, I will like you know watch a trailer, maybe read a little bit of a review and see where it's going. Mm. Um. And that really comes down to the horror movies because mm. I was a big fan of horror movies as a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad was, um, he loved the universal horror movies. So mm. those were all the old black and white movies with Bela Lugosi Got and it. and, um, and uh, the Frankenstein, um, Boris Karloff mm. and Lon Chaney, all those movies like Frankenstein, the werewolf, Dracula. He was into those things. Mm. And so um, when he left- I think a lot of the things he was into, I kind of grabbed onto. I see. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I became the expert in the area. Oh, I so see. I'd be like, Dad, there's one, there's a, there's a Dracula movie in between those other two, and you'd be like, right. I never saw that one. Oh yeah. Like, well, you gotta see it. It's the best. Yeah. You know, so we shared that. Yeah. And it was your, really fun. The connection to your dad. Yeah, it was a fun connection. Yeah. And he always loved Halloween. Yeah. He would be Dracula every Halloween mm. with a huge candelabra. With subtle makeup on, with the whole outfit, with the big collar and everything. Wow. And he'd open the door slowly when they rang the doorbell. Yeah. And he'd open the door slowly with the candles, looking mm-hmm. at them intently. Oh, wow. Kids would just run off. <laughs> yeah. And our house became legendary. Yeah, wow. Because he would open the door. And and if they were brave enough to stay, he would just open the door and slowly give them the bowl of candy. Yeah. He wouldn't do anything else. Sure. But it was classic so yeah. i grew up with that kind of dad got it yeah so and, and it's fun yeah you know, that stuff is fun and um but there's a line yeah with cinema sure and with art yeah that as a christian that you you don't want to expose yourself to all these perversions yeah you know and i have yeah um i mean just the you know just the usual weird weirdness that right. you don't need to see this stuff. Right, right, right. You know, a good horror movie, then we've talked about this, a, mm-hmm. a good horror movie can be, the guy in the basement, the killer, can be sawing someone in half, right? right. If you're with that for like a second, right. but then the rest of the movie is like the FBI sure. drama, right. and they're trying to go down there to get the guy, right. and there's a little dash of his sickness, Sure, but the the main thing is, you know, that. Right. That could be great. Right. Great movie. Right, right, right. But when the whole movie is the dude down there. Right, right. You don't leave that space. Right. I'm done with that. Totally. It's so sick and wrong. Right. And I think some of these filmmakers literally would be out there doing that if they weren't making these movies. Wow. I mean, seriously. Right. He's like, what's, Evil. This, what's this one with the clown, this new one? Have you seen this thing? I haven't. Oh my, this is from hell. Wow. Anyway. Yeah. No, it's real, but it's, no, it's good people. Um, it's good that we do draw lines in, in what we should be processing and whatnot, because it is programming the mind and it does affect the soul and it does affect the heart and the, the eyes are the window This is it. Um, into, and in, in the ears. And we are, you know, we wish we could unsee certain things. We wish we could undo certain things in life, but sometimes we go down that path and it opens up doors and things. And then we struggle with that for the rest of our lives, you know? So it is unbelievably powerful. And I remember, Dave, we were, I was in a podcast with somebody and you had brought up how um, the TV shows have basically destroyed the American family. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I mean, we there are so many TV shows that basically dumb down the dad, you know, um, you know, break up the kids and, you know, just yeah. the, the whole. That's so dumb. The hamster saves the day. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Dad's exactly. useless. <laughs> like the yeah. pet is like the hero. And it's like, it's literally happening in our society. Yeah. It's literally like families are falling apart. Dads are nowhere to be found. Men aren't men anymore. You know, no one will stay in, stand in the gap. Now, is that some kind of agenda? I mean, I, it, it, that's, I mean, we can debate it. It's hard. It kind of seems like it is to me. Totally. What's hard, what's hard to tell is who's, who's up to this. And we know who's ultimately up to this. For sure. Lou. Yes. Cipher. That's it. Uh, Lucifer himself. Satan himself is behind this, but it's very hard to pinpoint if the the powers that be, the, the ones who are overseeing 
these companies who are producing these things, if they just think it's just flat out funny mm -hmm. and it's just part of their sinful nature and desire to put this out and then society grabs onto it and that's how it slowly drags down society. Or if these guys are actually like, let's destroy the father, yeah. let's destroy the family. Let's, you know, uh, that's, what's hard to pinpoint, but nevertheless, it is happening. And, uh, we, we try to process everything our kids watch. I mean, we can see already, you know, we, uh, they'll watch a, a show and immediately after start acting that way. Yeah. And so uh, we're we're careful, you know, with things. Katie and I talk about all this stuff more than ever, and we want to protect our kids' innocence as long as we possibly can. And um, you know, there's lots of things, yeah, that I will watch. There's lots of things that I will not watch. Sure. You know, I just won't do it because I just don't like what it does to my brain. I don't like what it does to my heart, and yeah. uh, I am very careful. You can pro. There is an infinite amount of things to process. For sure. And I don't need to process at all. And you know, sometimes, and you're, you've are you gotten tuned that way over the years with maturity, and I'm slowly getting tuned. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm still being, I'm, we're all being sanctified, but yeah. I'm being tuned in a way to really manage what I'm, manage what my eyes are seeing. Yeah. Because it really can damage you in such a big way. And, you know, it's like, one of the things I think about, it's like, we don't look at pornography. We don't, I mean, right. sure, we might fall and look at something sure. briefly and repent of it. But like, we don't make a habit of looking at that because we know how bad it is for us right. and how corrupting it it's is. It's programming. Yes. And so um, the same with like a horror movie that's like just intensely bloody and disgusting mm. and just so horrible. Or, or movies that it's are- programming as well. Yeah. Or movies that are dealing with the occult mm. and even video games. So these video games are so violent. Mm. I'm not into any of these super ultra violent video games, right? Um, and they're out there, and mm. they're and the little kids are playing them, right? And it's it's really bad. Um, we need to be careful, yeah, because yeah, these things are programming, and they are causing us to think and feel certain things. And um, you wake up one day and you wonder why you are that way. Mm -hmm. How did I get there? Yeah, why do I why do I look at women this way? You know, why why don't I have a pure mindset? Why? Why am I so violent on the inside? Right. Why do I want to go and, you know, smash that guy in the face? You For know, sure. Whatever. And then movies about the occult and stuff like that too. Uh -huh. It's like, do we really want to be spending time? I mean, the Lord says, avoid all these things. Yes. I don't want you playing with tarot cards. I don't totally. want you playing with the Ouija board. I don't want you studying astrology. Well, they, they say it's all fun and games, right? Yeah. It's all fun and games. Yeah. No big deal. But then it's like you get into it and it's like, uh, they're doing some crazy stuff. Yeah. And the warnings are everywhere. So it's like, do we need, do we want to sit on the couch and watch other people do it? Right. We wouldn't watch other people having sex. Right. So why are we watching other people play with Ouija boards? Right. I mean, I just, I just think of that. Yeah. And I, and it, it convicts me because mm. I want to watch some of those movies with sure. the crazy ghosts and stuff right. like that because it, it's fun. Right. You know, but you can't. Yeah. You got to. No, it's good, Dave. Um, I never thought about it that way when you said, you know, we're kind of in a godlike state, you know, like watching through the window of someone's house. Like we can, you can lift the lid off of somebody's house and you're basically watching and that's what's essentially happening in a movie. You're watching someone's whole life. Totally. That's so crazy. I never thought about that in that we get excited about that. We, we enjoy that, um, being the fly on the wall per se in the film, you know, and we're sitting, we, even though there's 500 people in the theater, you know, yeah, we're, we're all watching someone else's life unfold before us and we get a kick out of that. You know, I, yeah, you know, I, I wonder, it's really interesting. Have you ever thought about this? I don't know, it just came to mind, but, um, it's really interesting that a lot of this isn't in the Bible or like, why isn't, why isn't a lot of entertainment like in the Bible or like, why, why is it, you know what I mean? Like, even uh, plays and acting and, um, you know, uh, I don't know what they would have back in um, yeah. Old Testament days, but they would probably have some like some type of shows or acting or yeah, singing sure that would go so. on or music, you know, that would go on. But you don't see a lot of it. And, I, and it's really interesting that all of this is absolutely taken off in the last hundred, you know, years or so, just absolutely exploded. Surely operas well, and, and well, all kinds Shakespeare of Shakespeare was like literally like everyone knows Shakespeare. Right. But like he was literally like the tool of the day. Wow. And like all the propaganda came through his shows. Wow. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Interesting. I mean, all the political this, that, the other thing of like whatever's happening there, he's talking about in his thing and like pointing, you know what I mean? It was right. happening then. Wow. And so, Dave, you've taken your craft and brought it into the church. 
Praise the Lord. I'm and, uh, grateful. Man, we are, uh, how many episodes in is this? Oh my God. I don't know what number this is, but we just launched 25 today. Yeah, yeah. With Mike. But I think we're, this is probably number 28, 20, we've really this is gone, like 29, we, maybe 30. Let's say we've gone down a level. We've got Mike Shattuck and now we've got me. <laughs> We've gone, we've literally sunk down. No, Dave. This is the, well, it's vacation, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's December and uh, it's Christmas time. And so- uh, It was our, so good that we needed to have a stinker. No, 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 no. We, we, we've just been waiting to put you in. We've just been waiting to put you in, Dave. You know, it's oh, just dude, like- When you, when you were like, hey, hit the grand you want to do it? It'd be, it'd be fun. We can talk. And I'm like, oh man, no way. And Chris and I had a bond. We're like, no way, brother's bond. <laughs> we're not doing this. We're going to hold tight. No, yeah. And uh, man, the perfect I times. Correct. But um, Dave, you helped me build all this in here. It was so fun. Yeah. Build all this. And, uh, and your wife helped design a lot of it. That's true. So cool. Yes. Helped pick out a lot of the stuff and was helping that's with the shots guy. and saying, we need to do this. But um, hand, yeah, all the, the audio and the setup and the details of the cameras and how we should capture it. Dude, and these the, microphones, can I say this? Yeah. Uh, like, we had one guest that was like, boom, bam, bam, bam. And I never heard, like, yeah. I never heard anything. Right. Like these things are yeah incredible. We could do an ad for these microphones. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're incredible. Right. That's why everyone uses. Right, these. sure. If you want to, uh, if you want to be a sponsor for our sure. show, let us know. Yes, uh, we'll we'll take that sponsorship. Uh, It'd be fun. But um, yeah, help build all this, Dave. You've done I don't know how many sermons over the years. Been a blast. Um, you all the side videos and things that we do for events and capturing legacy, the documentary really of legacy over the years. Um, we got to do the year end soon. We got to do the year end. Do yep. And, uh, we, we've talked a lot about doing future stuff. We've talked about, yes. uh, you building got documentaries. some documentaries, got some ideas, uh, Coming maybe, soon. maybe some films in the future. Yes, and, definitely. um, but, uh, you've really, you know, you've really encouraged me continually, you know, just to keep pushing for it, keep doing it, you know, let's just, let's just keep building, keep building. And it's so cool um, to see what God has done. And oh, yeah. this podcast already blessing, you know, so many people um, just because we chose to turn the camera on, turn the lights on and get after it. It's blessing me more, more yeah. than I, it's like incredible. Yeah. It, yeah. The blessings that this has had on myself, is just awesome. Yeah. I'm just, I'm so grateful to be a part of it, Josh. Thank you so much. Well, you are the secret weapon behind the scenes, Dave. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know anything about this yeah, audio. Yeah. I don't know anything he about does. these cameras. He no, I, no, I don't. And I don't know anything about lighting. You told me we need yeah. to put a China ball up here. I said, what's a China and then ball? And you found that we, and I'm like, hey, this is what it costs. He's like, wait a second. We can, we, we can deconstruct this China ball. <laughs> that's, that's just a China ball. Yeah, yeah. And so Josh gets on, on, you're so like, I watch these guys on their phones and it's like, how are you? You've already got the thing like, like. The China ball piece to the side, the light to the side. We could have, we could have packaged this thing. We, we could package it. Yeah, we can make this. make some good profit. We did good on. We did good. We did good on the budget. But you, uh, yeah, you, you know, you're telling me all the stuff that we, you know, and making making sure all the stuff works. I've had so many people come to me and say, "Dude, you're, you know, the podcast setup is ridiculous. These shots awesome. and like all the way the editing and the way it comes together, the audio. Praise the Lord. And these are people who do it for a living, you know. So it's like we. Uh, I don't know. I'm just just so thankful that we're able to do it, and uh, I have somebody to think it through with me. Me too. And uh, and then we get to uh, debate theology and goof off and uh, have fun along the way. Yeah, that's true. We do, and it's it's been so fun. Thank yeah. you, man. You're welcome, Dave. Yeah. Uh, thankful for you, Dave. Love you, and uh, Love you to to another ten years. Yes, let's do it. Uh, another ten years of media, and uh, believing that God's going to take all this editing. All these gifts, talents, and abilities, all this communication through media and use it for his glory. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Awesome. Love you, Dave. Thanks Love for coming on the show. Awesome. Do it.